Rafa, you were a great football player when you were young as well as a great tennis player. Why did you decide to go into tennis? Well, the life conduced me that way. You know? I think um, for a kid, I think it's easier to, to play football because um, you play with friends, you, you play like a team. So when you are nine years old, 10 years old, 11 years old, that's probably more fun. But at, the, at that age, I, I won the World Championship of Tennis. I, I had an uncle that was the, my coach. So everything conduced me to the, to the tennis world. No? So I, I practiced more and more and trying to be more professional. I had, I had to choose for tennis or, or football at the age of 12 or 13 because I, I had to keep studying and finally I make the, the right choice. <laughs> what do you enjoy so much about tennis? I love the competition. That's the, the, for me the most important part. No? I, I, I like the competition one against one. I, I like the feeling that when you are alone there. But I like the sport in general. No? I have to say I, I love tennis, yes, sure. But I, I love the sport in general. I, all the competition, all the the values of the of the sport is, in my opinion, is is great, no? and I, I enjoy practicing any sport. Your family and your team are very important to you. Everyone knows the influence that your uncle Tony has had on you. It's an interesting relationship. You've said at times he's been very tough on you, but also that you have the ultimate respect for him. What is the relationship like having your uncle as your coach? Well, I think it's great. No, if I have to say something, is. Almost everything is a big advantage, you know, because um, he's the, the the first person who is motivated to 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 make me improve, to make me uh, be to well to help me to be a professional tennis player. And maybe if you have a normal coach, and during the week it's raining on on Wednesday or it's raining raining on Tuesday. It's fine. You don't practice that day, and that's fine. No, having my uncle like a coach. If rains on Wednesday, we practice on Sunday, or we, we try to find solutions every day because his motivation was very big when when I was a a kid, and uh, that's helped me a lot. And for sure, have a family around me who helped me in everything was probably decisive. You've said before that. You actually idolized your uncle so much that at a young age you thought he had superpowers that up till eight or nine years old that he could make himself I invisible. Yeah, exactly. No, well, he <laughs> he did a lot of things, and uh, well, he makes fun of me uh, hundreds of times when I was a kid, and well, I was the first. No, I was the first, uh, the first in the family who. I don't know how to say exactly in English, but uh, the first one who who has the the, the grandfathers, uh, the first one being the, you know the first son, everything in in the family. You no, know? we have a big family, and well, they they enjoy a lot with me when I was a kid. All the family and my 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 uncle Tony really uh, I don't know, but. <laughs> really make a lot of jokes on me. No? What about the influence of your mother? We hear a lot about your father and your uncle and uh, as your coach, but w what influence has your mother had? Well, my mother is, is very important. No? My father was working a lot, always, and my mother stays at home uh, taking care of me, of my sister. And he, without her, everything will be almost impossible, no? but because uh, he can take care about uh, Everything when when my father was was working, no, and uh, I remember uh, a lot of times when I when I was nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen years old that my father arrives home at nine nine p.m. in the afternoon. So my mother had to do it everything at home, and uh, and she was always ready to to bring me. Uh, to the football practice, to the tennis practice, to, to every, every place. No? And have uh, my mother there was very important for me, sure. Pretty amazing coming from such a small island in Mallorca. Two players that have been number one in the world, yourself and Carlos Moya, 
I've been to see you in Mallorca. Uh, your family has a great restaurant. The club that you played at, I mean, your head almost hits the ceiling. I mean, it's, it's so small and it's produced the greatest clay court player of all time. How unique is that coming from such a small city like Mallorca? Well, I, I, we have a good conditions there. And I think that uh, the, the weather is great to, to practice the sport. So that helps a lot. And then sure, it's a little bit of lucky and coincidence, no? But I think we, we had the right infrastructure when we were kids to, to practice as, as much as we like and uh, as good as we need. Uh, and that's why we had the opportunity to, to go out, to, to, pre to play in, a, in a tournaments in Spain, outside of Spain. And I think the, the role of our families was very, very important for both of us, Carlos and me. When did you realize that you were special? <laughs> Never. <laughs> no. I no. mean, you're, you're that humble. I mean, I, now, I mean, Rafa, I appreciate that you're so humble, but I have some, some statistics. You're only 26. You've won 50 titles, hmm. over $50 million in prize money, 11 Grand Slams, seven French Opens, Olympic gold. Are, are you getting embarrassed yet? No. Four, four Davis Cups. You're the only person ever to win the same tournament eight times, Monte Carlo. You've won 21 Masters 1000 titles. You've been 102 weeks number one. You have the longest single winning streak on a surface, 81 on clay. I mean, you're saying you didn't realize at any point that you were special or unique? No, I think a few, a few things makes, uh, makes the things go well. No, and I think, I, as I said before, no, if I, I had uh, a lot of factors on my side that helped me a lot, like my uncle, like my family, like my team, that I had uh, a great team, the same team since ever. <laughs> so uh, that was, was great. I have the, the right people around you that they are not afraid to, to, to tell me what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is not right. That's very, very important. No? And, and it's true, no? I, I cannot say and well when i had eight years old i won the well the balearic uh, championship yep until 12. you know when i was weight i win the under 12. so that's a lot because with four years less win win a title in in well it's true is in our community in balearic islands but that's a lot because four years at that age is is amazing no? so when that happens, it was something special for me. And that gives me confidence, that gives me a lot of power to, to practice hard. But at the end, I always never realized that I was special. I always went day by day, trying to practice well the next day, and like this until today. No? And, Is that uh, part of your greatness? Because you're so humble, because you may be a little insecure, you keep pushing and keep working. I mean, I, I read where Tony, you said that Tony at an early age taught you that you had to be able to deal with pain and fear and push through it. Is that part of what makes Rafael Nadal so great? May, maybe yes. No, I think I, I think I have doubts always and I think it's good to have the, that doubts because that, uh, that makes me work, that makes me work very, very hard. And for me, when I start a new year, a new season, everything is new. I don't know if I will be able to, to keep being the number two, the number three, the number one. I don't know. I, I try to go another time day by day, match by match, and hoping.